What's up guys? We are back for another Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay review and today we're taking a look at Freya of Dead Hall. So this is one that I've actually gotten a number of requests for so we're finally getting to her. Uh, you can see her here in the standard packaging. We've got her there in the big window. We do of course have a bio for her on the side and then the back of this box has that same artwork and write-up that we've seen throughout the line. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. All right, guys, here she is out of the packaging, our Freya of Dead Hall figure. And this is one that, honestly, I haven't been too excited about. Something about the design for this one just isn't for me. That doesn't necessarily mean she's a bad figure. In fact, that's definitely not the case. There is some interesting stuff going on here. You can tell she's already got a little bit extra in terms of what your normal figure would have right out the gate. But we're going to take a look first at articulation. we got to see how she moves around, and then we'll take a look at all the stuff that's going on. So as usual, we will start at the head, and we do of course have to mention right off the bat that yes, she does have the pauldrons on, yes, she does have her cape on, and she has extra soft goods because she has a big fur piece that sits over top of her. This is, in as far as I'm concerned, the way she is she meant to be displayed, she's supposed to look like this, so we've got her all decked out with everything before we move her around. So the head can swivel. It goes back and forth, up and down a little bit, but of course things do get in the way and she has a big head of hair. So these little strands of hair are loose. They are not part, well they, they're part of it, but they're separate from the main head of hair. So they do help and aid in moving the head around, but she only moves so far. So she does have that. The arms can of course go out. The pauldrons will move a little bit to help you with that, but the fur is not attached. It just sits on top of her shoulders. So you do have to be kind of cognizant of that when you're moving her around. You can of course rotate there. We can rotate at the elbow. You have got a single joint, so 90 degrees. Since she has no armor there, there's nothing to get in the way. We've got rotation at the gauntlet. We've got rotation at the wrist, and then we've got hinges. We have an upper diaphragm swivel, so she goes back, she goes forward, side to side, and rotation. Honestly, she moves pretty well up top. Uh, I don't really have any issues there. She swivels quite nicely. We do have a waist twist. The legs can go out. They kick forward. They kick back. The only thing that's in her way is her like girdle and loincloth, and it, it moves just fine. There is a thigh cut up there, so you can move that around. We've got a single jointed knee with rotation, and then we've got rotation, rocker, and we've got hinge down there at those ankles. So it is, you know, as far as female figures go, she is par for the course in terms of what we would expect here. She's got everything that all the other uh, figures have, except she does have a little bit of stuff that can get in the way just because she is a little bit beefier when it comes to all the stuff that's going on up top. Now, when it comes to the overall look and feel of this figure, it's pretty obvious that they're going for a Valkyrie, Shield Maiden, Nordic kind of look and feel. And it kind of, to me anyway, makes her to be the odd figure out. She is very different from a lot of other figures in this line. Sure, there is, you know, like Juno is a female barbarian, but that's really not what this is. So they're similar but different. And she's just kind of out there. I know that's kind of weird to say in a line that has, you know, green and blues and red skeletons, but she's just a little different from some of the other figures. I do think she works well in terms of what they've done here. I think she's pieced together really nicely. Obviously, we've got a very, you know, Viking uh, style chest piece on her. We've got a leather girdle. We've got the knights, kind of standard knights, female knights, a waist piece here with the with the thigh armor, we've got the tabard that runs down the front, we've got the elven style uh, shin guards and boots and gauntlets, which work well. All of the pieces mesh together. We've got the uh, the knight style um, pauldrons up here, which work nicely. So she's got kind of a, she's got kind of a brown, silver, gold aesthetic going on in terms of what her color scheme is, and it works pretty well. I do think that the idea of her being a Valkyrie or a shield maiden comes across pretty plain as day. My only real gripes for this figure, outside of the fact that I just kind of think she's weird in this line, is, uh, and you know, kind of an out there figure in terms of what she looks like, is that the cape on my figure had the holes all misaligned in terms of how you actually have to peg them in. And I know that mine is not unique because I've seen other people uh, asking about this on various groups and Facebook and so forth. So the, the peg holes on this are weird. They're misaligned. So I actually had to cut another hole into mine to get it pegged in there, which at the end of the day is not a huge deal. It sits fine. It hangs on her really nicely once you get it there. It does have kind of a dirtiness to it. There is uh, like some soot 
put in there almost is what it looks like. Uh, a little bit of blackness that kind of clouds it up. Makes it look good, makes it look battle-worn. My only real gripe in terms of the soft goods is the fur piece here. So I kind of pulled this up. So she's got a pelt that she wears across her back and it just sits on her. There is no way to affix it to her unless you were to put a hole into it and then peg it through. But I think honestly that might compromise the, the fur aspect. I think the fur on its own looks pretty good, but in some ways it just looks too long and scraggly. Like it just looks not all that great in some angles. Sometimes it looks fine, sometimes it doesn't. I, I would really prefer if, you know, if, if you're familiar with the Range Trooper figure from the Black Series, Star Wars Black Series, the fur aspect of that figure I think would work really well on this figure. Uh, but in terms of how you actually use it, you just fold it over her and it sits underneath her pauldrons and then you pop the pauldrons down. So you just kind of drape it on her and it hangs just fine. It's not really in any danger of falling out too often unless you're really moving her around a lot. I just don't think it really looks all that great. And of course, it's another thing that has to add to the clunkiness of the figure when you're moving her around. So it definitely does kind of get in the way when you are moving those arms around. But once you pose her, it's going to stay just fine. Now, of course, we have to talk about the head sculpt on this figure. I think for, for me personally, you know, outside of the fact that I said I feel this figure is kind of just the odd woman out, odd man out in terms of how she looks. She kind of doesn't fit to me in some ways. I do think that the, the head sculpt really, really smooths some of that over because it's just fantastic. This might be maybe one of my favorite female head sculpts. Uh, the face is definitely on point. The paintwork on it is fantastic. She's even got a little blush on her cheeks to, you know, make them a little rosy. We've got tremendous detail in the eyes. We've got the glossy lips. And I absolutely love, 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 love her helmet. So, as usual, the wings are movable. You could, you know, rotate them. You could pop them out, I suppose, if you really wanted, but I'm not sure why you'd want to do that because they look fantastic and they absolutely belong on this figure. I love all the intricate work on her helmet. This visor does not move. It's a solid piece. You've even got like kind of runic designs up on the top of her helmet there, which lead back into her hair and the hair is really nicely done. It's all one piece, but she's got braids that run through. And then we've got these two straggly pieces that hang off. These help when you move her hair around, as I mentioned, uh, but they of course add some aesthetic uh, pleasantness to this figure. So it just adds to the beefiness of her hair by at the same time looking very unique in this line. We've got all the gold in there. Everything about the head sculpt on this figure is, is definitely on point. It looks fantastic. It's really nicely done. Sculpt is there. Paint is there. The unique design is there. And of course that helmet is, is just fantastic. I wish I had one of those for another figure. Now, as far as accessories go, she has a pretty decent spread, but it's not anything too outlandish. Her weaponry fits her character, I think. I, I think it fits the theme of the Shield Maiden, you know, Norse type of design. She does, of course, have a lot of other stuff. So we've got pauldrons we've already talked about. We've talked about soft goods. We've talked about the fur. So that's other stuff that she has that can be considered accessories. As far as legitimate weaponry and such, we do, of course, have the back adapters. We've got the strap. We've got the belt. Uh, we've got the shield here. So this is very much just the standard shield in the line. The wooden buckler style shield with some copper and some gunmetal style metallic paint on it. Got a handle. Same shield we've seen over and over and over again. We have got one of the standard swords in the line. This is the not the short sword, it's not the long sword, it's kind of the medium sword, so it's not one of the little daggers that we've seen. But it's a silver blade with a kind of patinaed handle. It's got a little bit of red here that meshes with some of the coloring in her armor. So we've seen this a lot before. Again, it's just she has nothing but some of the quote-unquote standard style uh, weaponry. And then we've got the big spear. We've seen this before. This has been in the line for a very long time. Gunmetal gray uh, tip here, which I really like the fact that this, for some reason, this works for me. The other staffs that have the different colored uh, tips versus the actual staff itself really bug me. But this works for me for some reason, so go figure. But we've got a gold staff with a gunmetal blade on there. So this is kind of my preferred weapon for her. Use this with the shield. But of course, the sword works just fine. You can have her hold this in both hands simultaneously or, you know, each hand can hold one item independently. So you've got a few options here. Not a ton of weapons, but what she has I do think fits her well. And then of course she has a bunch of other stuff in terms of armor and soft goods. So overall, like I said, Freya wasn't really on my radar. You know, I got her because I got the all-in Kickstarter. Was I interested in taking a look at her? Absolutely. I still don't think I'm all that wowed by her. The design on its own just doesn't really do a great deal for me. But the figure is, of course, well-assembled, well-painted, well-sculpted. There's really nothing to gripe about in a technical sense when it comes to the figure itself. I really dig the face sculpt, and I really love her helmet. It's fantastic. My only real gripes from the fact that I just don't care for this design compared to a lot of other stuff in this line is that my 
cape, as I mentioned, was incorrectly punched. The holes were way out of whack. And then I just don't really care for the fur. I think it's kind of odd. It looks kind of scraggly in some places. Sometimes it looks great. Other times it's, you know, kind of hanging on by a thread because it really has no way to be secured. It just sort of sits around her shoulders. So I kind of think it gets in the way more than anything else. But overall, she's definitely a nice action figure and she certainly fits well within the line. But she is at the same time kind of an odd man out or odd woman out. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Freya of Deadhall figure. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.